Teresa, who is the event supervisor. All right, I'm ready. OK. Good morning. So if for those of you who've participated in grasp a graph before, nothing has changed, but um, I thought I should just clarify that so you're not trying to find some hidden changes. Um, I'll start by going over the description for all of the new folks. Essentially, this event is it's a it's a written test to challenge kids to be able to interpret information from different kinds of graphs. And for the elementary event, we only use pictographs, pie graphs, bar graphs, line graphs, and Venn diagrams. So it's um, narrowed down to just those types of graphs. For the event, it's important that your student bring a pencil. They absolutely need, each of them need a pencil to um, complete the test. For the graphing portion, it's also um, advised that they have a ruler and colored pencils, and they are allowed a simple non-programmable calculator. It's not essential. I'll say the numbers that we use, are should be easy for them to um, add, subtract, divide, multiply. Um, worst cases, they could use the test of scrap paper to determine that, but they can bring uh, a simple calculator if they want. Um, do not allow phones in the event, so they cannot use their phone as a calculator or scrap paper. We allow them to write on the test to you and they can use the test as scrap paper. Uh, the team. Um, we do have we have had in the past students can a single student can complete the test in time. It's certainly preferred to have two students on a team and if you do have two students, I do allow them to tear the test apart and divide and conquer however they see fit. Um, light whisperings allowed as a result of that. 30 minutes like all the other test events. So as we get down to the competition, so the test is made up of really two primary parts. The first part is 35 to 45 multiple choice questions. They'll be giving given pictures of different graphs and then a series of multiple choice questions to um, that they're going to have to go look at the graph to get the answer for. And then part two, they'll be given a set of data and asked to construct a graph on graph paper. We use half inch graph paper that is available on the website to download. It's helpful to practice on the half inch graph paper for scale reasons, so I encourage you to do that. Um, for for this part of the test, they'll only be asked to draw either a bar graph or a line graph, so we narrow it down even more for, for this section. Scoring is based on the completeness of the graph, including neatness and labeling, and um, later on in another slide, we'll go over that rubric more detail. There will also be a few questions for this part of the graph, so the intent would be the student finishes the graph and then they have a few questions to answer based on their own visual. And again, um, students will be given one piece of graph paper as part of the test and that's it. So they need to. You need to teach them how to plan before they start drawing. Um, and what to do if they do make a mistake so that they don't panic because we won't give them another set of another piece of graph paper. OK. Scoring wise, part one ends up being about 60%. Part two ends up being about 40%. Um, there's no time limit. They can divide and conquer both sections however they see fit. So they have the whole 30 minutes to do that. Um, the multiple choice questions are graded on zip grade. 
so I do allow them to write on the test, but they need to have transferred the scores to the zip grade in order for them to be graded, and that has to be done within the 30 minutes. And then if there's any tiebreakers, we will use part two as the tiebreaker. So whoever scores better on part two would win the tie. And if there's still a tie, and we have had that happen in the past, we'll have some predetermined questions from the from the multiple choice section that we'll use as a, a second tiebreaker if needed. OK, let's go over some examples. So the multiple choice section, this is um, what they'll see. It'll it'll start out with a picture. Of a graph in this case, there's a Venn diagram and then there'll be a series of multiple choice questions following the picture of this graph. That they'll need to to go look at the graph to answer. So here we have how many people ate just cake at the birthday party. So they would go back up and look at the graph to answer that question. OK. Now let's go over an example of part two. So this is how a set of data will be presented to them. There'll be a um, couple sentence story about what the data is about, and then there'll be data presented in a table like this. And then of course they'll have the graph, a whole separate sheet of graph paper to construct the graph on. Additionally, as I mentioned, there'll be some questions to, to answer that are relative to the graph that they draw. And here's an example of one of those questions. Which animal did your graph show an equal amount in both suits? OK. OK, here's the scoring rubric for the graph. So it needs to have a title. The title should be um, an appropriate title that describes what information is going to be compared. Uh, it should be well placed. That kind of means at the top, in the center. Uh, there should be a key if it ends up being a double line or a double bar, so the reader can distinguish between the two sets. It needs to be an x-axis title, a y-axis title. Data labels and units, if it's a measure that has units on the x-axis. Um, they need to be even and in, in appropriately spread out into um, appropriate intervals, and then the same for the y-axis. Neatness, set up and scale on the graph paper. So here's an additional uh, piece of the rubric that kind of grades how they choose their intervals. So they want to choose the best, the intervals that obviously they have to remain consistent. So whatever interval they choose, it has to be consistent along the axis to be able to fit all of the data points with within the piece of paper and um, and take up a majority of the paper. So the goal would be to take up at least half, two thirds of the paper with the intervals that they choose. A correct type of graph. So for this, I do make a point out of. Um, I want them to understand the difference between discrete data and data um, relationships between variables that change over time. So although a bar graph and a line graph, you can graph any data with for this for for this test, if I give them discrete data, I'm expecting them to graph a bar graph. They'll still get all the other points, but they would not get the points for a correct type of graph if they if they chose a line graph in that case. <clears throat> and likewise, if I asked them a question like um, if I gave them uh, ice that <clears throat> excuse me like um, the temperature of ice as it melts over time and I gave them temperatures and different minutes, I would expect them to use a line graph to to um, show that type of data. And then each of the data points need to be placed accurately on on the graph as well. 
OK, I think I have some examples of some graphs that might help. So of course, this graph was done in Excel, um, but you've got the title at the top that tells you the two sets of data. It's summer camp activities for both girls and boys. There's a key there in the upper right corner to give you the different color code for the girls and the boys. You see the intervals, they're even on both the X and Y axis, and there's data there. And then you see a title for the X and Y axis as well. So if we go to the next page, I highlight so just to make sure it's clear the difference between a data label and an X and a title or an axis. I've highlighted the X axis and Y axis titles in that example. And then if we go to the next page, I've highlighted where the data labels are. And then just to prove that it can be done, I just did put a picture in here of an of a student's graph from a long time ago. Okay. Questions? Make sure you guys take yourself off mute if you have a question. I think every everybody is on mute. Uh, Ankit has a question. Either you can put it in the chat, Ankit, or you can uh, say it out. Yes, I'd like to just ask if that's OK. Sure, absolutely. Yes, so I understand that mean the majority of focus will be on bar graph as well as line graph. Uh, do they also going to have to construct any kind of pie graph or something, or it is just uh, in the MCQs? The construction, the graph construction is only a line or a bar graph. But okay. the multiple choice questions, there, there will be a section for each type of the graph that I mentioned. There'll be a Venn diagram, picture and questions. There'll be a pie graph in the multiple choice section. There'll be bar graphs and line graphs. So all of the types that I have listed in the rules will be in the multiple choice section. And I have a second question. I understand these kids are younger. Our team will be like third and fourth grader. So it will be a simple discrete data or will it be like a functional graph? Like, you know, what we normally see in the middle school level, like y is equal to ax squared plus b or something like that, like hyperbola, parabola. No, it'll be as simple, like, so if it is discrete data, it'll be a story like the example I had in this PowerPoint, where you had right. different animal, like what kinds of animals are in the different zoos, that one. It'll be that simple. And if it's um, two variables that change over time, it will still be presented in a table. It's just that um, the what I'm trying to get them to understand is that there's so if this was three minutes and seven or three minutes and 14 minutes between these two points on the graph, there's actually other information there. So there's there's information on a line graph between the points of a line graph, but it would still be presented in a table, not a function. There'll be nothing that they'll have to calculate or solve. Uh, so it will be mostly statistical kind of uh, graphs, not really any kind of geometrical or those kind of functional graphs. Correct. And one last question I have. Can you recommend any resource or any source where we can get easily so kids can practice? So there is a old regional test out on the Science Olympiad website that you can download the full 35, 45 questions. And so you can get examples of each type of graph as well as a 
uh, graph construction question. So I encourage you to do that. If you're looking for how to coach them, um, I will have in the backup of this presentation a couple of websites that you could um, access if you can't, you can make up your own graphs because they're simple graphs as well. Um, I don't think they use time for kids anymore. It used to be this little um, uh, one page newspaper that the kids would get in elementary school and that would have a graph in it. Um, some of the newspapers have simple graphs in it that you could um, use. Uh, the history books actually have almost more examples of graphs than the math books do. So those are some ideas. But you can also make up your own. Correct. Makes sense. Thank you so much for all the detailed answers. Mm -hmm. So I'll find that uh, sample test paper on Macomb as ESO, that Macomb Science Volunteer website. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And I think um, this presentation will be posted um, in a few days after today's event, as well as the test, the event rules, the graph paper. There is also, Teresa, the, the, the new version of the Scantron uh, that's on the website. So kids should practice that, filling how to fill that up. Okay. It's called Zipgrade. It's not Scantron anymore. It's a Zipgrade. Okay. Um, Teresa, I have a question. Sure. Um, how many do you have a maximum number of um, data points that will be in the um, table that you give them? The ones you showed us had what four or five um, parts of the yeah. chart they would have to transfer to a graph. Yeah, I might have had as many as six. OK, I want to That's give them the chance to be neat, so I know I know kind of what fits on that half inch graph paper. Thank you. There's somebody. Any waiting. other questions? Looks like there's somebody waiting in the lobby. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, can I admit them too? Yeah, you can admit them, but I, I was not paying attention. I got it. OK. Any other questions? It is a pretty straightforward event. You just need. Still requires the kids to practice like any other event, but from a rule standpoint, it's pretty straightforward. Matt, did you have any question? I know you joined late. So shows on hold, so I'm not sure what's going on. OK, well, and I think. If you think of a question after today, um, you still have the ability to submit them. Is that true, Manish? That's um, correct. Uh, if they have a question or clarification, they can use the FAQ. There is a, if you go to Macomb ESO and then go to the elementary, uh, it may not be open. I have to double check. It may not be open right now, but it should be open in about a day. And once it's open, you send the question or clarification that you need. And the supervisor will get a copy of it. We will get a copy of it, meaning there is three, four people who man help manage that dialogue from Macomb Science Olympiad. Uh, so we'll get a copy of it. We'll get the response from the supervisor and we will post it on the FAQ section. Uh, once it's up, there are some questions that were asked in past. And if they are still relevant to the current rules and format of the test, 
then you know left them up there. So you will see some older questions in there too. One thing I can tell you is uh, reading the rules uh, several times uh, between now and the tournament is going to be a big help and visiting the website to check the FAQs because sometimes somebody may have a clarification that just opens up completely different avenue than what I was thinking, how that should be handled. So I would definitely encourage everybody to go look at those FAQs. Any other questions? All right. I think uh, if there are, oops, Ashish Ankit has a question. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Uh, just a uh, yes. gentle reminder before we finish, if you can go through the last si slide to get those uh, resources or something, you said you have it in the final. It'll be in the backup when we um, upload this presentation online. Yeah. Oh. So that slide is not here right now, but we'll add it before we upload it. And it will okay. there will be a give us about a couple of days because everything is recorded. Uh, this whole session is recorded. So this whole session will be posted up too. So if you forgot something or somebody who is not here wants to come and check this, you know, out, then it will be available to them. If anybody has question, you can just uh, ask. No need to raise the hand. I mean, if you can, you can raise the hand if you want, but you can ask. And if there are no questions, I'll give about a minute and then uh, I'll let you guys go to other sessions or whatever else you have planned for the day. Any other questions? Or are we all set? Looks like we are all set. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Teresa. Thank uh, you. Good luck, and we'll see you at the tournament. Okay. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. Thank you.